Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and today I'm coming at you with my September wrap up. Now we'll get the elephant out of the room. Yes, I got a haircut. It's a lot shorter. It's cute. I really like it. And that's about all I have to say about it. I'm growing now the undercut that I have. So I uh, cut my hair shorter and we're going to keep it at about this length for a couple months until the rest of the hair catches up and then we'll grow it out again. Um, but I, it's been a while since I've had this short hair and I really like it. I kind of miss it, honestly, but we'll see. So fun fact about today's video. Um, so this is a wrap up and I actually did do quite well as far as the wrap up goes. I own zero of the books that I read. I'm not sure how I managed to do that. Actually, I do. I listened to a lot of audiobooks last month. Um, work got busy and I have been listening to a lot of audiobooks in general because it's easier because I have a long drive to and from work. And then I also um, am able to kind of listen while I'm in the back at work, while I'm sorting and doing stuff like that. So it works out pretty well. It doesn't really, it's not really conducive for physical reading, unfortunately, but I also just haven't sat down in the past month for a very long period of time. Um, but hopefully that's going to change this month and I'll start reading these books on the shelves. So I have all these pretty shelves. I just don't want to take them apart. That must be it. I'm going to go with that. Sure. I don't know why my voice is weird today, but it's been weird all day. So we're kind of going to go with it and just say it's a vibe, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure. So first off, like I do every month, I have my iPad here with all of my statistics. And you actually got to see me make it at the beginning of this month. So that's kind of cool. Well, you got to see me make next month. So that's still, that's what it looks like. All right. So in total, in the month of September, I read 12 books. And now that is pretty good for me. It's been a while since I've read 12 books. Of these 12 books, six were physically borrowed, like from a library or from a friend. And then six were audiobooks, as long as I have my stats correct. Um, as far as ratings go, Four of them were five stars, three of them were 4.5 stars, and five of them were four stars. So that also is another good sign. The one thing about the books that I did end up reading is that they weren't really very long books in total. In total, I ended up reading about 2,585 pages. So that's not terrible. Um, it's short because Seven of the books were under 200 pages, two of them were between 201 and 300 pages, and three of them were between 301 and 400 pages. So the books I read weren't long this month, honestly. I'm kind of catching up on some backlog and I read some graphic novels, so graphic novels are never very long, but I did manage to read one of the books on my TBR, so that's always good. The longest book that I read was 384 pages, while the shortest one was 111 pages. As far as authors go, it was one male author, 10 female authors, and then one that was a combination of all of the above. Eight of these authors were from the US and four of them were from the UK or Ireland. As far as genre goes, Nine of the books I read were fiction books, one fantasy, four mystery, and four of them magical realism. And then three of them were actually nonfiction books. One was a self-help, two were writing, and then four of these books, young adults, and seven of them were adult books. So that's kind of my summary right there. Uh, it was a good reading month for the most part. No, the books weren't very long, but they, it was still a good reading month. I'm going to stick with that. The first book that I read was After the Funeral by Hercule Poirot. This is the 33rd book in the Hercule Poirot series by Agatha Christie. Um, if you haven't been to this channel before, I am slowly, ever so slowly, working my way through the Agatha Christie series, all of her books, and I am currently working on the Hercule Poirot series, which is her longest series with 40 some odd books in it. And I am on number 33. And they're still good, which is kind of cool. So After the Female follows a family who um, is very dysfunctional. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Knives Out, I believe this it's kind of based in this book a little bit because it's very, very similar. So 
Um, not to make any spoilers, but I also highly recommend that movie. Uh, one of the few movies I've watched and highly enjoyed. So basically, the head of the family dies and then he leaves his money in kind of weird spots and everybody's kind of debating as to why he left it there and that there must be some mistake. He must not have been right in the head. And then someone comes up with the answer only to be killed themselves. So it kind of... It's very interesting. It is very good in my opinion. I absolutely loved it. So I highly recommend this one. I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 because it was a little bit predictable. The next book that I listened to was The Burnout Generation by Anne Helen Peterson. And this is a this was a super short audiobook. It was only like two and a half hours long. Um, that just kind of talked about why we're a burnout generation and what that means. And it was interesting. You don't want to go into it looking for solid facts. This is more of a research paper. So I thought that that was a very interesting way to go about doing the research. And she definitely took the stories of a couple different people and talked about it. So again, I thought it was very interesting. Well written. Um, don't go to it looking for solid concrete facts. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5. The next four books that I read were Lumberjanes uh, graphic novels. So I read Lumberjanes volume 11, which I ended up giving a 4.5 out of 5 to, and it's called Time After Crime. Lumberjanes volume 12, Jackalope Springs Eternal, which I did give a 5 out of 5 to. Lumberjanes volume 13, Indoor Recess, which I also gave a 5 out of 5 to, and Lumberjanes volume 14, X Marks the Spot, which also got a 4, or, or also got a 5 out of 5. By Shannon Waters and Cat Lee with illustrations by Amy Socho and Dowser Draws. So I really enjoy this series. I think it is adorable. I believe there's only 20 in the series, so I'm almost done with it but I highly recommend it. It is so cute. This basically follows a group of five girls who are sharing a cabin and they're the head of their cabin as they explore this camp that's meant for very adventurous girls. Um, and it's so interesting. There's the, These are the magical realism books that I read this month because it is magical realism. You don't really know what's going to happen because it could be magical. It's usually magical, but it's also taking place in our world. So I think that's so well done and it's so much fun. And I am wondering why they haven't made a TV show out of this series yet. The next book that I read was a nonfiction book actually from the library, which is why I don't still have a copy. I did have to return it. And that is Murder Your Darlings and Other Gentle Writing Advice from Aristotle to Zenser by Roy Peter Clark. Um, this, Zinser, sorry, this is basically a writing advice book that talks about the different aspects that other writers have come up with in their books, um, and kind of compare and summarizes them in a sense. And it kind of gave me an idea of where to go as far as my nonfiction reading, where I'm reading about writing, which is a whole thing I'm doing right now, in case you didn't know. Um, I'm trying to read a couple nonfiction books about writing each month, just so that way I can get better myself at writing. Um, this one was pretty good. Um, I did end up giving it a 4 out of 5. I just wasn't blown away by it, I guess. I still have the Chuck Palahniuk book list is still my top writing book that I have read as of yet. So this one I enjoyed. Um, it was a little bit longer than I thought, but it also, he went into a lot of little details, so it was very interesting. Um, didn't exactly help me like I wanted to. This was more a book it felt on journalism than it was on actually writing like a novel or a story, so things to note. The next book that I finished was Bodies in the Library, Volume 3. This is edited by Tony Medawar. And I give this I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 because I am absolutely enjoying this series, like, wholeheartedly. This is the third, and I think it might be the final book that's at least out in this little miniature series. Um, basically, what they do, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, is they take unknown writings by some of the biggest mystery writers of the times um, and kind of squish them together and make them into a series of short stories. Squish them together. It sounds like they take stuff off. They don't. 
they put them together into a compilation of short stories. Um, and it's so well done, it's so interesting, and it's so much fun to read some of these stories that maybe only got published once or were lost in archives years ago. This is the kind of thing I find interesting. Yes, I'm totally nerding out right now. It's okay, everything is fine. <laughs> but yes, I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5. I love listening to the audiobooks of this, and I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book that I read was the 34th book in the Hercule Poirot series, and it was called Hickory Dickory Dock. This one I ended up giving a 5 out of 5 to because it was super interesting, and I thought it was really, really well done. This follows a series of kleptomaniacs, um, no, this follows a series of thefts at a boarding school. It's absolutely insane. It's so well done. And the whole concept of it is so intriguing, and I honestly, I just can't get, can't say anything other than it was very well done. So I highly recommend this series. Again, if you haven't read them, you don't have to read them in order. Sometimes it helps to know some of the characters. Like this book followed, um, this book we actually were called out to a ho the house by a character that Poirot met like 10 books ago. So... Sometimes it takes that long in order to get there, but honestly, this book was so well done and I cannot recommend it enough. Next book that I read was called Steering the Craft, a 21st Century Guide to Sailing the Sea of a Story uh, by Ursula K. Le, Le Guin. This is a very short book. It was 160 pages, but it was very informational, honestly. And I found myself taking quite a few notes on it. Um, it was detailed how she goes through writing a book and what she recommends for people so it really was well done and very interesting and i highly recommend it again i don't want to talk too much about it again it's a non-fiction book about how to write a book but she also does a bit more she more goes into the craft of like how to craft a narrative and how to get people to like your character or how to get them to dislike your character it's one way or the other Excuse me, it can go either way, so. She also had a lot of exercises in this book that I actually did do, and they work really well. So again, highly recommend for if you're kind of working through some stuff in a book and you, um, or you're just starting a brand new book, honestly. She has some great ways of starting off and creating your characters and what that means and all of that, so highly recommend. So the next book that I read was completely, honestly, out of my comfort zone, but I ended up reading Guilty Pleasures, the first book in the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series by Laurel K. Hamilton. I've had this book on my shelf for quite a while. Well, not on my shelf, but on my like TV, to be read shelf on Goodreads for quite a while. And I ended up picking it up because my library had the audiobook and I was like, well, I need to know audiobook. So, okay, why not? So I did that and I binged it. I listened to the whole thing in one sitting. So this book follows Anita Blake, who is, as it says, a vampire hunter. But then she ends up getting pressured by a bunch of vampires and uh, gets launched into or gets launched into this vampire world where she has she's trying to help the vampires figure out who's killing them and. I kind of figured out, but it's not the point. Um, I really liked this story because they didn't make the vampires good. They were not good, like, really at all. There were a couple, like, outliers that were all right people, all right creatures of the night, I guess. Um, but they also made vampirism into a fad, which, like, they made it into a kink almost to a point. And it's, it's very interesting and a very... You, I find it unique because I haven't read anything like it before, but I also haven't really read a lot of kinky paranormal books, not gonna lie. But um, it was it was very interesting to read, and I am continuing with the series. I've just started the second one, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, overall, I actually, I gave this a 5 out of 5 because I binged the whole thing, I was caught up in the story, and then I had like almost a miniature book hangover afterwards. Like, what the heck, dude? Not cool. But yes, I did enjoy it. 
And the last book that I managed to read in the month of September was Dead Man's Folly, the 35th book in the Hercule Poirot series. I got into a role here this month of reading Hercule Poirot, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this one was also another very interesting one. I did give it a 4 out of 5, but it um, followed a rich couple who decided to put on a mock murder mystery, and so they hired a an author in order to have her kind of spearhead this and get the story moving and all of that. And then someone ends up actually dying, even though it was just supposed to be actors. And then they bring in Hercule Poirot to be like, hey, can you actually solve the actual murder? Because whoops. So without letting any of the guests know. So that was an interesting one. It was very well done. There were a lot of characters to kind of keep track of. I think that's one of the things that turned me off of it was I wasn't blown away and I wasn't like particularly upset about anything that happened because I didn't know the characters very well. The only reason I felt really bad for the person who was murdered was because she was so young. But yeah, I don't know. It was it was interesting. It wasn't my favorite, but it's still well done. So, yeah. Well, that's what I got for you guys here today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, now is the perfect time to give it a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and then the occasional Sunday. And if you want to be reminded when we post these videos, please hit the little bell icon down below. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!